okay yeah so antibiotics antibiotics uh, i told you antibiotics the most commonly most free, almost all the antibiotics are being obtained from fungus and it is meant to act against bacteria why i have put this picture is because we know a very common classification of antibiotics based on which portion of the bacteria it acts based on which portion of the bacteria the antibiotic is acting we have different types of antibiotics so let's see part by part this is a bacterial cell first of all this cell wall cell wall okay now what are the antibiotics which inhibit cell wall synthesis antibiotics first classification the first part antibiotics which inhibit cell wall synthesis how it inhibits cell wall synthesis there are certain antibiotics which inhibit cell wall synthesis because there is an enzyme called transpeptidase transpeptidase enzyme which is required for the proper cross linking of the cell wall of the bacteria so there are certain antibiotics which inhibit this transpeptidase so that cross linking of the bacterial cell wall is not possible and as a result destroy the bacteria what are those antibiotics penicillin cephalosporin cycloserin vancomycin bacitracin bpc bbc instead of bbc you can say just bpc cv that was the only code i could get from this penicillin bacitracin penicillin cephalosporin whenever penicillin uh, one another thing is that penicillin and cephalosporin almost have the similar method of action okay so whenever you see penicillin you'll see cephalosporin uh because both are uh, narrow spectrum uh, beta lactam antibiotics they have the common uh, structure common method of action so penicillin cephalosporin together it will be there bpc bacitracin penicillin cephalosporin cycloserin vancomycin okay bacitracin penicillin cycloserin then uh, cephalosporin cycloserin and vancomycin these are the antibiotics which inhibit the cell wall synthesis now coming to the next group what are the what is the next group antibiotics which alter the plasma membrane permeability of the bacteria antibiotics which alter plasma membrane permeability of the bacteria antibiotics which come under this group as a b c amphotericin b bacitracin colistin amphotericin b bacitracin colistin a b c the antibiotics which inhibit the plasma membrane permeability amphotericin b bacitracin colistin and you have the np nystatin polymyxins nystatin and polymyxin the other one was bpc cv the, those that inhibit the cell wall synthesis now antibiotics which alter the plasma membrane permeability are amphotericin b bacitracin colistin nystatin and polymyxin a b c np now the next part is ribosomes so what are the antibiotics that inhibit the protein synthesis antibiotics which inhibit the protein synthesis we have tetracycline erythromycin chloramphenicol clindamycin linozole we say that the protein means associate a uh, protein synthesis means you can uh, uh, you can just imagine that associated with high energy high energy group so high energy group means it is a tech class techies they are working the whole night and all the whole day and night and also they are high energy group so we can put tech class tech class people they are high energy group so it comes under inhibiting protein synthesis tech tetracycline erythromycin chloramphenicol then class cl clindamycin and linozole i told you whenever there is penicillin there will be cephalosporin whenever there is tetracycline there will be chloramphenicol along with it so both tetracycline and chloramphenicol they act on the ribosome and inhibit the protein synthesis of the bacteria tetracycline tech t tetracycline erythromycin chloramphenicol and clindamycin and linozole now one more point to uh, remember from this is i told you tetracycline act on the ribosome and inhibit the protein synthesis of the bacteria and thus destroy the bacteria it tetracycline acts on 30s ribosome and inhibit the protein synthesis of the bacteria whereas chloramphenicol it acts on 50s ribosome and inhibit the protein synthesis of the bacteria that is the difference tetracycline acts on 30s ribosome chloramphenicol acts on 50s ribosome okay now coming to the next group the antibiotics which causes misleading M, misleading of mrna misleading of mrna aminoglycosides aminoglycosides all the aminoglycosides misreading of mrna which comes the antibiotics which come under that group is aminoglycosides 
Aminoglycosides act both on 30S ribosome as well as 50S ribosome. Tetracycline acts on 30S ribosome. Chloramphenicol acts on 50S ribosome. Whereas aminoglycosides act on both 30S as well as 50S ribosome. Okay. Now, next group, which acts on the DNA. The antibiotics which act on the DNA. In DNA, there are three, three methods of acting. So, those uh, antibiotics which inhibit the DNA synthesis. Total DNA synthesis inhibitive. The antibiotics which it totally inhibits the DNA synthesis. That means it should be very aggressive. Those comes under antiviral drugs. Acyclovir, Zidovid, the last one. The antibiotics, uh, it is actually antiviral drug. Uh, the agents which inhibit the or interfere with the entire DNA synthesis is the antiviral drugs. Acyclovir, Zidovid. Then we have the antibiotics which interfere with the DNA function. Function. Okay. Those which comes under that group are rifampicin and sulfonamides. DNA function, F function, rifampicin and sulfonamide. Because this is the only way to remember all these antibiotics. It's not possible to buy that. So if you have some common words or common term, it is easy to remember. Those that interfere with DNA function, rifampicin, sulfonamide. Now the antibiotics which interfere with the DNA gyrase enzyme, that is fluoroquinolones. Antibiotics which interfere with DNA gyrase enzyme is fluoroquinolones. And last, we have the antibiotics which interfere with the intermediary metabolism, metabolism metronidazole. Okay? The antibiotics which interfere with the intermediary metabolism, main group is metronidazole, trimethoprin, uh, primethamine, all are there. Mainly, remember, metronidazole, which interfere with the intermediary metabolism. Okay, that was one basic classification of antibody. We have to know about that because uh, questions are asked from uh, uh, asked uh, regarding which antibiotic, what is the mode of action of this antibiotic. So we have to know this basic classification. Okay, now we have the other part that is there are two groups of antibiotics. You know, narrow spectrum antibiotics and broad spectrum antibiotics. So what are the narrow spectrum antibiotics? To remember that, uh, take the word spectrum. The first three letters S P E. Streptomycin, penicillin, erythromycin, the first three words. Those are the narrow spectrum antibiotics. Streptomycin, penicillin, erythromycin. So since penicillin is there, uh, cephalosporin will also be there in that group. Okay, narrow, narrow spectrum. Penicillin is there, so cephalosporin will also be there. What is streptomycin? It's an aminoglycoside. So all the aminoglycosides are also coming under this narrow spectrum. SPE, narrow spectrum. Then we have the broad spectrum antibiotics. The next two letters, CT, that is chloramphenicol, tetracycline. Chloramphenicol and tetracycline. These are the broad spectrum antibiotics. SPE, narrow. And the next two letters, CT, broad spectrum antibiotics. Okay. That's a, that is the way to remember that. Again, from this also questions are being asked, which among the following is a narrow spectrum, which among the following is a broad spectrum. Because uh, if you get a question like, uh, that is how you have to learn. If, if you get a question like, which among the following is a narrow spectrum antibiotic, you get option. When you read an MCQ book, you see such a uh, question. Then you have to know which are the other narrow spectrum antibiotics at the same time, which are the other broad spectrum antibiotics also. Okay. Now we have another classification that is, uh, not the classification, another group that is, Bacteriostatic agents and bactericidal agents. Bacteriostatic and bactericidal. Bacteriostatic, which uh, just inhibits the multiplication of the bacteria, whereas bactericidal means completely destroys the bacteria. So what are the bacteriostatic agents? Static, ST. So uh, we can uh, use a synonym, SET, ST. Just include two E in between ST, SET. Sulfonamides, erythromycin, ethambutol, tetracycline. So that's why I told you before, whenever there is tetracycline, chloramphenicol will also be there in the group. And whenever there is penicillin, cephalosporin will be there along with it. Penicillin, cephalosporin, tetracycline, chloramphenicol. Okay. So bacteriostatic agents, sulfonamides, set, sulfonamides, erythromycin, ethambutol, tetracycline, chloramphenicol, and bactericidal agents, all the C. C, C for car. C for car. So there are three Cs and AR, car. Cephalosporin, ciprofloxacin, cotrimoxazole, and AR, aminoglycoside, rifampicin. Okay, only C which is there in static is chloramphenicol. That is because tetracycline is there in that group. So, chloramphenicol comes under bacteriostatic agent, whereas bactericidal come all the Cs come, C-A-R, car. Cephalosporin, 
ciprofloxacin, cotrimoxazole, aminoglycoside, rifampicin. Car. Then where comes the penicillin? Because since cephalosporin is there in that group, penicillin is also there in that group, along with bactericidal. I hope that is clear. Okay. Because to include uh, uh, to include a chloramphenicol and a penicillin, that is the only uh, way. That's why. Okay. Set. S E E T. Sulfuramide, erythromycin, ethambutol, tetracycline, and since tetracycline is a chloramphenicol, also static and bactericidal, all the C car. Cephalosporin, ciprofloxacin, cotrimoxazole, aminoglycoside, rifampicin, and since cephalosporin is a pencil, is also there in that group. Okay. Now let's move on to the next part. And uh, one point to uh, uh, notice: erythromycin is actually a bacteriostatic agent in low doses, but if you increase the dose of erythromycin, it will become bactericidal. Erythromycin at low doses it is bacteriostatic, but that is a only uh, that peculiarity is there only with erythromycin. When at low doses it is bacteriostatic, but when doses increase it becomes bactericidal. Now let's see a little bit detail about the beta lactam antibiotics. What are beta lactam antibiotics? There are four drugs. Two of them are one is penicillin, one is cephalosporin. Beta lactam antibiotics. Why it is called as beta lactam antibiotics? Because it has a beta lactam ring. The uh, ring um, uh, pointed by the black arrow is a beta lactam ring. Since this ri uh, ring is there, it is called as beta lactam antibiotics. And it has another ring mentioned by yellow. Uh, it has approximately similar structure also. Two rings and one ring is beta lactam ring. And two points to be noted. Actually, you don't have to remember the structure, but in order to remember the antibiotic and in order to make it easy, the classification, in order to make the classification easy, I've included this uh, picture. Why this picture is because you have to know two things. We have two types of penicillins. One is penicillinase resistant penicillin. So what happens is actually the bacteria, certain bacteria release an enzyme called penicillinase. Certain bacteria, we are giving antibiotics to destroy the bacteria, but the bacteria itself again will, you know, uh, will uh, de destroy the antibiotic. Certain bacteria will destroy the antibiotic while releasing an enzyme penicillinase and destroy the penicillin. So to overcome that, a certain penicillinase resistant penicillins are given. Uh, there is a, in the picture penicillin, you can see a bond uh, noted by X. That is where the penicillinase enzyme released by the bacteria come and act and destroy this penicillin. So to overcome that, certain structural changes are incorporated and we have the penicillinase resistant penicillin. What are the penicillinase resistant penicillin? We'll see in the next slide. So that is what penicillinase to overcome this action of penicillinase enzyme. We have the penicillinase resistant enzyme, penicillin. And we have one more type, beta lactamase inhibitors. It is a beta lactam antibiotic since it has a beta lactam ring. So the bacteria, certain bacteria will release an enzyme called beta lactamase and destroy this beta lactam antibiotics. To overcome that, we have a we have a group called the uh, the uh, penicillin was modified, change, changes were incorporated, and we have a group called the beta lactamase inhibitors. What is that? We'll see. And in apart from penicillin and cephalosporin, we have two more uh, beta lactam antibiotics. Carba carbapenems, examples, imipenem, meropenem, fa faropenem, doripenem. You have to be familiar with these terms. Imipenem, meropenem, faropenem, doripenem. Uh, these carb, uh, the action is almost similar to that of beta lactam antibiotics. Only thing is it is highly destroyed in the renal tubules. There is only peculiarity. Then we have the monobactams, mono. That means we know that beta lactam antibiotics have two rings, but monobactams means it has only one beta lactam ring, only a beta lactam ring. That is a peculiarity. Example is astrionam. What is the uh, significance of this peculiarity? Because since there is a structural difference, if a patient, pa patient is, uh, is uh, allergic to other uh, beta lactam antibiotics, we can give monobactams because since there is a structural difference, we suppose that we have an infection and that is uh, effective against a beta lactam, uh, we need to give a beta lactam antibiotic. But if the patient is uh, uh, allergic to penicillin, we can't give any other beta lactam antibiotic. So instead, but we can give monobactam because it has a structural difference as it has only one ring. So there won't be any cross sensitivity. Example is, Astrionum, astrionum. Okay. Now coming to a few points on penicillin. It is effective against almost all the organisms: Streptococcus, Pneumococcus, Meningococcus, Actinomycosis, Gonorrhea, Syphilis. Like that, it is effective against almost all the organisms. Please note there is no Staphylococcus in that group. 
what is ag effective against staphylococcus will come in the next slide and it is one of the reaction caused by uh, or uh, adverse reaction caused by uh, giving penicillinus jarish herxheimer reaction it happens because when penicillin is injected to a syphilitic patient there will be exacerbation of the responses patient will have high temperature skin reactions that happens when penicillin is given to a syphilitic patient now what are the penicillins this is a classification of penicillin natural acid resistant penicillinase resistant broad spectrum extended spectrum beta lactamase we get questions uh, many questions from these okay so we'll see one by one in group one one group natural penicillin penicillin g procaine and benzathine penicillin what is the peculiarity in that benzathine penicillin actually it is uh, given once in 2 to 4 weeks it is one of the longest penicillin with the longest duration of action benzathine penicillin given im it is sufficient to give it once in 2 to 4 weeks once in 2 to 4 weeks okay benzathine penicillin it has the longest duration of action given by intra uh, im route next we have the acid resistant penicillin what is the significance of acid resistant penicillins that means acid it is acid resistant that means it can be given orally orally even if you give it orally it will resist the acidity in the stomach so uh, acidic can be in the stomach so these antibiotics these can be given orally phenoxymethyl penicillin penicillin v that is penicillin v and phenoxyethyl penicillin these are the acid resistant penicillin phenoxymethyl penicillin and phenoxyethyl penicillin they can be given orally that is a peculiarity now coming to the broad spectrum group ampicillin amoxicillin telampicillin ampicillin compared to uh, the uh, in this broad spectrum group uh, the and uh, the penicillin which is having a very good gram negative spectrum is ampicillin it is usually given uh, intravenous route it is given usually given as intravenous route so ampicillin it has a very good gram negative spectrum ampicillin okay now what are the advantages of amoxicillin over ampicillin amoxicillin we are giving in, a, in a, we are using it in our day to day practice so what is the advantage of amoxicillin over ampicillin Amoxicillin, the oral bioavailability is very good for uh, amoxicillin. That is, it easily, uh, there won't be high first pass metabolism. It, oral bioavailability is very good. Less chances of diarrhea for amoxicillin compared to ampicillin. And also it is effective against both gram-positive and gram-negative organism. It is effective against both gram-positive and gram-negative organism. Amoxicillin, advantages of amoxicillin over ampicillin. Next. Extended spectrum penicillin. The word extended spectrum itself denotes that there is carbenicillin, all the cillins, carbenicillin, tricarcillin, piperacillin, PTC, or something like that. Carbenicillin, tricarcillin, piperacillin. It is effective against extended spectrum. So there is some additional organism also against which this is effective. What is that organism? It is pseudomonas. So among this, the uh, uh, penicillin, which has a very good anti pseudomonal action, is piperacillin. Extended spectrum itself denotes that it has effective against other organism. And among that, the antibiotic, the penicillin, which is very effective against that is when clavulanic acid is added to amoxicillin. Why? In order to increase the, to extend the uh, antibacterial, to uh, extend the uh, antibacterial spectrum. Now we have the last group that is penicillinase resistant penicillin. We know what is penicillinase resistant penicillin. In that, we have already seen in the structure. We have two groups acid labile, acid resistant. What is acid labile? That means it is uh, destroyed by the acidity in the stomach, and acid resistant means it can be given orally. Fluclosacillin and acid labile group are M and C methicillin, nephicillin, cloxacillin. Acid labile group. Methicillin, nephicillin, cloxacillin. So I told you that uh, Staphylococcus was not mentioned in the antibiotics, uh, the organisms against which penicillin is effective. So actually, Staphylococcus has some peculiarity. It releases penicillinase enzyme. So in order to uh, in order to destroy the Staphylococcus infection, we have to give a penicillinase resistant penicillin. Staphylococcus releases penicillinase enzyme. So in order to destroy Staphylococcus, we have to give penicillinase resistant penicillin. And the most common drug of choice for that is methicillin to destroy staphylococcus infection. Okay. Now, what will happen if the staphylococcus is resistant to methicillin also? 
Staphylococcus is a bit, little bit uh, vigorous one. So what if the Staphylococcus is resistant to methicillin also? Then the drug of choice will be vancomycin. Vancomycin. Vancomycin itself has some peculiarity. That is, if it is given by rapid IV injection, there will be sudden erythematous reaction in the body. Sudden erythematous reactions in the skin. And that is why it is called, uh, that, is, that is called as red man syndrome. Red man syndrome. When erythromycin is given by sudden IV injection. Rapid IV injection. Okay. Now, what if the staphylococcus is resistant to both methicillin and vancomycin? That is MRSA and VRSA, both, uh, and also all the vigorous organisms, other vigorous organisms. If the staphylococcus is resistant to both methicillin and vancomycin, then what will we give? The drug of choice is linezolid. Linezolid. Okay. So that's how it goes. Now, Let's move on to the questions. Please try to attempt the answers. Which of the following antibiotic is bactericidal in action? Which of the following antibiotic is bactericidal in action? Bactericidal. Car. C. Car. Yes, I can see both the right and yes, answers are there. Car, C A R. Yes, very good, very good. So the answer is very good. Answer is aminoglycosides. Car, yeah. So all the C's and the car. But chloramphenicol is there, but it comes along with tetracycline. Yes, very good. We remember set bacteriostatic agents are F set, S E E T, and also chloramphenicol. And bactericidal agents, all the C, car. All the other Cs, car. Okay. Now we'll move on to the very, very good. Thank you for the response. Now, now we'll attempt the next question. Only beta-lactam antibiotic that can be used in patients having severe allergy to penicillin or cephalosporin is. All these questions, actually, these were, these were repeated questions uh, for the uh, entrance examination in the recent years. Okay. All the repeated questions are in, are included. Yes, very good, very good. Astrionum, it is a uh, very good, very good. Thank you for the response. And this is the uh, answer. Astrionum, it is a mono monobacter. And piperacillin comes under extended spectrum penicillin. Cephasolin is a cephalosporin. Since allergic to penicillin and cephalosporin, cephasolin can also cannot be given. Aslocillin, actually, it is a, it is it also comes under the piperacillin group. It is also an, uh, coming under extended spectrum penicillin. So uh, here it comes like, uh, like this is in a way to attempt an MCQ. You may not know the, in this case, just consider this option. Piperacillin, you know, it's an extended spectrum. Astrionum, you know, it's a monobactum. So you, the answer is clear. Cephasolin is there. Aslocillin. So uh, if you know the answer clearly, don't confuse with the, uh, there, sometimes some option will be given as a new term, just to confuse you. But if you know what is monobactum, what are the beta-lactam antibiotics, then it becomes clear. I will move to the next question. Which of the following is effective against pseudomonas infection? Pseudomonas infection. This was also again repeatedly asked in the previous years. Which of the following is effective against pseudomonas infection? Yes, very good. Very good. Answer is piperacillin. Yes. And also, now actually we discussed only in detail about very good, very good, very good response. So actually we discussed in detail only about penicillin. So among penicillin, the agent which is effective against pseudomonas is piperacillin. There are other agents also. That's so. That's how we re, uh, learn an MCQ. So uh, in our in our regular classes, we'll be we, along with this. We'll include also while uh, discussing the antibiotics topic. We'll include all the other organisms, uh, other pens, antibiotics also, which are effective against pseudomonas infection. Okay. Now we have discussed only about penicillin. That's why I'm um, giving only about penicillin. So in this, if such a question, you have to know all the antibiotics which are effective against pseudomonas, like that. So that, that's the method to learn. Mechanism of action of penicillin is by inhibiting. Transpeptidase, transaminase, 30 years ribosome, 50 years ribosome. Yes, very good. It's by, it is by, it acts by inhibiting cell wall and in the cell wall, it inhibits the enzyme transpeptidase. Okay. Now the last question today. Which of these inhibit cell wall synthesis? 
ജെൻറ്റാമൈസിൻ വാങ്കോമൈസിൻ ക്ലിൻറ്റാമൈസിൻ എരിത്രോമൈസിൻ പി ബി പി സി സി ബി യെസ് വെരി ഗുഡ് ആൻസർ ഇസ് ബി പി ദി ആൻറ്റിബയോട്ടിക്സ് വിച്ച് ഇൻഹിബിറ്റ് സെൽ വാൾസ് ഇൻ ദ സിസ് ജസ്റ്റ് വി കോൾ ബി പി സി സി ബി പി സി ആൻഡ് സി ബി പാസിട്രാസിൻ പെൻസിലിൻ സെഫലോസ്പോറിൻ സൈക്ലോസറിൻ ആൻഡ് വാങ്കോമൈസിൻ okay so i hope it is clear that is how mcqs are attempted that means see, uh, this this is what which of these inhibit cell wall synthesis if this question was also asked previously so if such a question come we have to know uh, what are the mode of what is the method mode of action of other antibiotics or which which all inhibit cell wall which all inhibits plasma membrane uh, protein synthesis like that okay so uh, it's not possible to read the entire theory when if such a question is asked you can't read entire the theory really all the related theory portion of uh, every subjects take your textbooks read all the theory portion it's not that possible so uh, that's why we are here we'll help you we'll, we'll uh, travel in this journey together uh, to achieve your dream your dream goal that is post graduate entrance exam okay so like this we'll be uh, uh, we are focusing on discussing the relevant theory portions which is uh associated with the questions recently asked question because next year it's not necessary that the same question will be asked but if anything related to this is asked we should not miss it 